Welcome everyone. And uh, as uh, my topic for today is learning as a journey, also let's see this presentation as a journey where you're invited to join as active as you want and uh, bring a little bit your inner compass of what you would like to take from this, um, from this lecture, from this sharing uh, into place so that you can answer, that I can answer questions, that I can little be, be uh, resonating with what is your need to experience here. So learning as a journey, a little bit the background, how it came that I'm here. Um, I was working together with Tomek for several years on the adventurous education training at training course on um, supporting the EVS and later the European Solidarity Corps mentors and coordinators. And we did a train adventure. And somehow we experienced through these four years, we worked together different aspects of learning in the reality of being on the way, on the journey. We traveled with trains, with boats, we hiked, and uh, through a lot of talks with Tomek and also a common ground which have established the activities, it become more and more clear that it's not just a one thing which I do, but it's somehow a red line through my life as a pedagogue, which I would like to develop further. So who I am, a little bit the context. So I'm working as a, as a trainer in the European youth work field since around 2004. I have been trainer for the volunteers, doing on arrivals, midterms, for coordinators, mentors, doing the SOHO training in the frame of SALTO, also organizing several activities as a, as a trainer, part of different networks of the Polish trainer pool, but also of some international trainer networks. And I was always fascinating about this topic of personal growth and learning through authentic actual experience. I'm a youth worker, so I have been working for many years in the context of circus pedagogy. So I've been coordinating, but mainly also implementing and facilitating groups of young people, international volunteers, but also as part of youth exchanges and training courses, holding space uh, for groups. And also locally, I work with different uh, target groups, mainly young adults and, uh, and young people with culture and art. I'm a project coordinator, so I'm also writing and implementing the project which I wrote. So I wrote several strategic partnerships around the topic of learning, public space, uh, handcrafts. Uh, we did a key action too on, on balancing fears through circus and uh, walking on the wire. And um, somehow also this holding space on a project level for international <clears throat> international partnerships is part of my work. I'm an activist, so I'm involved in uh, cultural movements or also ecological protests. Somehow I try to combine my, my passion for youth work with making an impact on my local community and connecting as much as it possible also the other fields to it so that my work has an impact and making also a difference in the world, which is important for me. So I'm an artist, I play music, I paint, and also express myself through holding space for creative processes. So inviting artists and creating collaborative art or multidisciplinary art events, exhibitions, is also something of my, of my focus. Um, I'm a community leader. Uh, I'm living in Nemos, which is a, um, which is the cultural hub here in Berlin in an old factory of bath tubes, where we are holding events for the community. Around 50, 60 people are living here. We have an art residency, co-working space, a very flat hierarchy, and a lot of uh, processes to empower people's involvement and how to create a meaningful impact here in our local community. So just now we are hosting a, a meeting of representatives from a different cultural projects which are situated in old factories around Europe. So we have a network event uh, in, our, in our event space here. And I'm a father, so I have a 14-year-old daughter, which is my light and inspiration to take pedagogy and learning, not just as an individualized professional focus, but also to see how I can support her uh, learning path. And I share as much as I can this in my in my private life, what I stand for as a trainer and facilitator. Uh, the topic today is learning as a journey. 
And um, it came a little bit from the context of this um, uh, experiences with Tomek that we are here together. And also our learning is kind of connected. I feel that I met, I met Tomek on the, on the training course for volunteers when he just came from his experience and being a volunteer in Ukraine. And I was very fascinated and inspired by his experience, which were very much this real life experience and being abroad, learning a new language, new culture. He did the movie. So somehow this was the ground of our friendship and also our professional relation. And he explored a lot this topic about how emotions are part of the learning, which I personally feel very inspired. And there is also the link, which probably we can explore further when Tomek will do his presentation about emotions and learning. But I can recommend to see the presentation on the Salto page. So it's a little bit giving the theoretical frame. Um, I would like to look on the topic of learning as a journey through four perspectives. So one is the personal perspective, how I can sit here and speak about it, what is the background of me as a learner on my personal path through life. Uh, I would like to look on the pedagogical perspective, what do we need to keep in mind to hold space as facilitators, trainers for young people and whoever wants um, to experience a journey as a learning in a learning context, to recognize it in the experience, which is probably limited in time and space, there are such valuable uh, inspirations around which would change our life, can empower us to grow, and how to hold space for that. What are fundamental elements of this pedagogy which we need to keep in mind? And of course, it's an open, it's an open topic. I share what what I stand for, but I'm very open to learn and increase uh, the quality of my work. I would like to look on the organizational perspective, like the the level of holding space and organizing this kind of events what it's necessary to, to keep in mind when we, when we prepare the frame for it, what kind of space we need to ensure that a learning experience as a journey can be fruitful and, uh, and safe. And I would like to, to also look a little bit on the institutional perspective, what the, the frame of the European um, programs, for example, can support to make this happen, what kind of additional institutional support would be needed, but also what could be inspiring for institutions to see as a potential for uh, evolving and implementing probably some shifts in the curriculas and the uh, funding measurements, measures. This is a little bit the frame. I put this picture because I see that learning as a journey has so many dimensions that, that to, to, to look into, into that, uh, we need to see also the links between. So where the person meets the community, where the learning meets the personal development for a fulfilled life. And this I wanted to show a little bit with the picture that we are like in this universe of learning here. Um, this is a little bit the structure which we would like to have. So we are already in the intro of the topic. I will create a kind of theoretical background with this whole, um, presentation and my vision of learning is, is built on. And then I would like to look a little bit on the experiences. So the personal experience, which uh, motivates me to, to facilitate and create this kind of experiences and the practical implementation in the work that I'm doing. So I choose like uh, four, uh, three case studies, which I would like to a little bit um, share and reflect through the different uh, perspectives and to see where we can get some universal learning about yeah, how to support young people and how to hold space for, for adventures. This I would like to conclude and uh, share with you a little bit the follow-up ideas which we have on the table, probably also to create some dialogue around common projects. This was a little bit in the, in the, in the vision of this meeting. And then a space for question and answers, but as I said, feel free to to jump in and to bring your your inputs whenever it's alive. So just shortly my story, because this presentation is not about me, but the presentation is somehow related to learning as a life path. So I would like to share a little bit the life path which I'm on. Um, I was I always was on the move. So I came from a Polish family to, to Germany when I was eight years old and I needed to adapt to a new reality. And I did it as a child with a lot of joy and, um, and curiosity. And uh, somehow this shift in my life shaped my, my way, how I was looking on, on, on life. So it was changing places and uh, starting new adventures. 
and trying to have this as an inspiration for my life more and more consciously when I become older shaping experiences uh, to go abroad to become part of my of my biography so I did a voluntary service I did an Erasmus so I inspired myself through through shaping a, a path which is allowing me to to jump into fresh waters again and again and again and what I what I always saw is this link between life and um, and profession. So my profession always has been my life, and I always felt this connection to a meaningful impact which I would like to give to the world. And is it in the trainings which I do, and the youth work which I do, and the art which I do, and the communities which I'm connected to? I feel there is a holistic vision of of making an impact, giving something to the world back, which I probably experience uh, through life and inspire others to be courageous, open, and to, to trust their, their calling and their life path. So this somehow inspired me to, to start to work as a, as a trainer and to hold space for, for young people. And um, from the beginning, I, I did it as, as part of them. So, so I never made a, a border to see, okay, there, there is me, which I teach something to, to others, but I create experiences which I'm authentically interested in and I'm taking part and I'm experiencing together and uh, so I feel that this is a kind of ground where, where where learning meets also my personal path so I would just like to say I don't want to say that one is better than another I feel that learning is anyway a journey if we want it or not the question is how we shape the journey so, so there are like two options to shape your journey so there is and I don't say formal informal um, non-formal education. I also allow that formal education can have that uh, quality in it. Like it's also very valuable to be in a school and to get fresh information, but to connect them to the life and the story which the learner is um, is carrying is a significant element of that this learning becomes something which the learner takes with him. And not just like on, on the left picture, which we have here so, uh, painted by Vicky, she's just around. So thank you, Vicky, for making the painting. On the left side, we have the learning as a as a kind of box which we see beside a street which is paved, and um, in this box we can go in and probably get something, and then we go out and then we continue this life path. And sometimes when we look on on education, we see that there's a lot of dead boxes, and we put them around the street which somebody else designed for us because this is a street of whatever a fulfilled life in the perspective of having a job and having a, a position in the society which is respected um, but mainly what this comes from is from an idea of preparing people for a professional which later they will have in in a in the frame of a, of, of a society which is already predefining what they need, what kind of competences, what kind of people. So we go into this box, we have our experience, and then we go out of the box and follow this life path, which is paved like straight and uh, kind of bright for everybody to meet on. And everybody should learn how to move on this life path. What are the rules? How you should behave? How to deal with the people which are left and right, that it would be successful and uh, and giving you a chance to be to be fulfilled. And the directions probably are like employability, which we have. And I don't say that employability is bad. I just say that we focus the learning only on getting an outcome in a job. We probably miss a big part what learning is about. And then on the social aspect, we have a lot about putting people in direction how they should behave so a behavioral um, kind of shaping their role in the society in that context probably connected to a system and a capitalistic system that they follow certain guidelines and obey on the other side as a kind of as a kind of contrast to that this is what we speak about is that life is a journey so you all paint your your river so life is a moving on a unknown destination which probably started at the at the source where we get born and it moves us to the sea where we will go back to the to to wherever feel we go back um but let's say to the mystery so between this there is a path which is flowing every river is a little bit different but it's still connected to to a common uh, quality of being always 
uh, in movement. So basically life never stops. So we say that this learning box will stop to be available for us in a certain age. We miss also the moment of seeing life as an ongoing learning uh, path. So here we see the learning more as a boat where we come together and we share a certain aspect of the journey. So we probably connected with a topic, we connected with a physical space and we connected with an intention to support, collaborate, contribute to an unknown outcome. So what we probably have is a, is a need of happiness or a, or a wish for happiness, however defined deep in our hearts. And this is probably a common sense to to create that uh, fulfillment through our learning journey. And then we have a compass, which is probably helping us to navigate on that journey, which are like values, something which is inside us present. And we would like to empower people to connect to their values. So the feelings, we already had a look and also Tomek did a lot of research and shared the results about how feelings play a role in, in learning so that we are able to connect to our feelings and. Um, be able to create a language of sharing them and then to identify how these feelings are probably helping us to navigate on this river of life. And then we have our look what we need to, 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 be, to be fulfilled and we can create intentions and wishes and shape how this journey is going. Um, and I would not say that one is better than the other. I would just say that one empowers us to take an active role and to shape and to hold space that we can meet on that learning journey authentically ourselves to feel what is our calling in life and then follow that, which leads us hopefully to hope happiness uh, on it, but also creates a safe container to meet others. And um, I would feel that it could be possible to, to create harmony between the concepts. And this is something probably which we can get at the conclusion. So to connect these two concepts of a institutional um, curriculum and uh, the shaping of a learning environment through formal education, and then to see how, how the life pass um, in a more open understanding uh, can connect and be in harmony with each other. Um, so to, to have that journey with, uh, with on this river of life as something, um, as something valuable, we need to create an, uh, a space of, um, of looking on us who are providing this experience as part of the, of the crew, of the captain together with the, with the crew on this deck, are experiencing um, this life journey in an organized and prepared way. So for that, we have a certain fundament which we can look on. So one of the elements of creating a successful and supportive learning uh, experience is to allow people to, to co-create it and to feel that there's a shared responsibility and ownership to navigate that ship on this river of life. Um, there is a supportive env environment provided. So we, we have a look on the safety. There are healthy social connections established. There's sufficient resources available. There is a necessary know-how present. And there is a ground of trust established. So another fundament is a space for reflection that uh, we create uh, room for dialogue or implement dialogue as a part of the culture. We create space for sharing the reflections, the re emotions. We allow people to, to plan together how to implement um, changes. So this reflection space is, is, is very valuable. And um, another aspect is that, that the experience has an impact. So we are not just on the river of life for the for a hedonistic purpose of, of being in a nice environment, but we put the focus on the impact, which is for our personal lives and for the world through the experiences which we do. So we are aware about what our actions are, are causing or what, what we can do with our actions, meaningful. There is a dimension of empowerment. So we allow people to shine their light. So we hold space that it's an inner motivation which we awake and then engagement being part of that journey is a significant element of the success of the of, of what we would like to achieve together 
And there is a dimension of community established. So we create a space of being uh, together, a healthy spirit of the team, a crew identification. So the adventure is rooted in a common awareness that we hold space together. So I don't want to put too much the context on formal education here, but just to recognize that the learner is very visible here rather than just can look through the window in a direction which is predefined. So we allow that the learner is becoming a centered actor of it. And we are not anymore um, dividing between the learner and the one who is teaching, but we allow that it's a common learning experience. So these are the fundamentals which a little bit when we look on pedagogy are shaping uh, how we prepare this space. And I would like now to bring this more theoretical ground into a sharing about um, practical implementations. So I choose like three case studies, which I would like to, to reflect on. Um, one is a, is a volunteer project, like a short four months volunteer project, which I did twice with a group of volunteers. And we um, created that, that community, this team of volunteers having an adventurous um, experience. And uh, the second one is a, is a social project we developed after the war started in the Ukraine. So it's a pedagogical circus uh, offer which we brought to the Ukrainian border and, and hold space for four months and supported the people coming from Ukraine. And the third uh, case study, the third project is, is a sailing and pedagogical educational sailing experience where we uh, invited uh, six artists, young artists to join a collaborative journey, art journey with an intention of peace from over the Atlantic. And these three case studies we would like to, to look from three perspectives, basically. One is a organizational frame. What do we need to what did we did to ensure a safe environment and how would you create the space for the experience from the point of view of the organizer, of the, of the space holder as an institution, let's say. Uh, the second aspect is a pedagogy and the facilitation, like to, to look what kind of, what kind of approach, what kind of elements we, we made as a supportive uh, guidance for, for allowing the young people to grow. And the third one, the third direction is the impact and the results of the learning, which have happened. Um, we put this uh, case studies, not just as, as projects here, we put them as adventures, which have been a significant quality, which we uh, see that they all have in common. So, and, and we build that pedagogy, this pedagogical frame inspired by the hero's journey. So as you will see, all of the case studies have that elements kind of in place and they allow this transformation, which has happened to, to be guided by a, by a certain theoretical frame, but also being an adventure as such, because we relate our adventure to the, to the essence of adventures, which the hero's journey is carrying. So uh, for the ones which probably haven't made the experience- like Harry Potter. Can I say- uh, I prepared- just a short video. I don't know. It will just change a little bit the flow. Are we on it? So it's like three minutes, and uh, yeah, we can have a look together on the on the quality of the hero's journey as a pedagogical frame. And I will refer in the case studies and more more detailed how we have made uh, the steps and how we see this uh, moving. So and Frodo, all have in common with the heroes of ancient myths. What if I told you they are all variants of the same hero? Do you believe that? Joseph Campbell did. He studied myths from all over the world and published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, retelling dozens of stories and explaining how each represents the monomyth or hero's journey. So what is the hero's journey? Think of it as a cycle. The journey begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world. But the quest passes through an unfamiliar, special world. Along the way, there are some key events. 
Think about your favorite book or movie. Does it follow this pattern? Status quo, that's where we start. One o'clock, call to adventure. The hero receives a mysterious message, an invitation, a challenge. Two o'clock, assistance. The hero needs some help, probably from someone older, wiser. Three o'clock, departure. The hero crosses the threshold from his normal safe home and enters the special world and adventure. We're not in Kansas anymore. Four o'clock, trials. Being a hero is hard work. Our hero solves a riddle, slays a monster, escapes from a trap. Five o'clock, approach. It's time to face the biggest ordeal, the hero's worst fear. Six o'clock, crisis. This is the hero's darkest hour. He faces death and possibly even dies, only to be reborn. Seven o'clock, treasure. As a result, the hero claims some treasure, special recognition, power. Eight o'clock, result. This can vary between stories. Do the monsters bow down before the hero, or do they chase him as he flees from the special world? Nine o'clock, return. After all that adventure, the hero returns to his ordinary world. 10 o'clock, new life. This quest has changed the hero. He has outgrown his old life. 11 o'clock, resolution. All the tangled plot lines get straightened out. 12 o'clock, status quo, but upgraded to a new level. Nothing is quite the same once you're a hero. Many popular books and movies follow this ancient formula pretty closely. But let's see how well The Hunger Games fits the hero's journey template. When does Katniss Everdeen hear a call to adventure that gets the story moving? When her sister's name is called from the lottery? How about assistance? Is anyone going to help her on her adventure? Hey, Mitch. What about departure? Does she leave her ordinary world? She gets on a train to the capital. Okay, so you get the idea. What do you have in common with Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo? What to Harry Potter? Yep. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. Um, it's a very inspiring concept because it's very authentic. It's rooted in the it's rooted in the in the dynamic of transformation of our lives, and we don't need to be a hero of a book to recognize that. And every story is a hero's story. So this is a little bit where we start that we identify the learner as being ready to thrive his beauty and the light and the gifts which are inside him and we see it as an authentic experience also for us so we join that journey with the same intention so i would like to shortly to introduce the circus space pirates project it's like a project which is developed here in berlin around the circus in public space so we bring circus to various contexts like social contexts, but also connect to the to the club culture, to do fire shows, to bring um, our circus tent to festivals and to hold space on demonstrations. So allow a variety of experiences to be connected to this common idea of we are the circus space pirates and we share this inspirational flow of of circus, of creativity, of playfulness as something which is transforming space, which is giving giving magic which allows people to join and to co-create this uh, wonder of life so we created that project based on the idea of uh, supporting volunteers european um, um, european volunteers and uh, create together a space for common activities so i was coordinating in cabo Vazi, which is a social circus in berlin the hosting of long-term volunteers and we got this idea that it could be nice to do things together and around a common identity, the volunteers joined. And based on that experience and that inspiration, I developed the idea to, to make a summer project where I invite volunteers just to join that creative flow of um, being responsible for the space which we bring to different contexts. And we did uh, twice a volunteer project with six participants from various countries, which will be invited with an open call to actually join joined that adventure and we created a supportive frame for them through um, regular meetings reflections about planning together which activities we want to do showing them possibilities and then giving 
giving them also the space to to change the project to design new activities to be on the road and make the road together so the activities were vi wide range of of uh, social circus um, adventures activities we had a bicycle you see it down there which was a circus space pirate's bike which we could round drive around the park and do different activities um, we also had access to a boat so we could do things related to the boat community in berlin we have the tent so we were traveling with the tent bringing it to demonstrations and we had a boat which we built on wheels which we could like push on the street on parades and um, yeah beside that we have some common trainings moments to reflect and to dive deeper into the art of circus and to see connecting also to the community in berlin what are possibilities needs and invitations and some of the activities were prepared so there were like several dates which we already had but then we could like shape additionally uh, activities based on what we have been uh, experiencing together so in this four months the participants learned to navigate this ship of the circus space pirates as a common as a common mission and uh, I have been part of that in most of the of the of the situations in the beginning also together with my colleague and volunteer which have been then starting to work in our organization and we had a mental structure around which was like independent from the team so that could also be reflected they had the space to live together and also had some contact to the other long-term volunteers so based on that this is the supportive frame we created a kind of feeling of of safety in a kind of elastic and and possible to co-create and co-design experience and um, the facilitation was about holding space and giving them the possibility also to have an active role so we use different tools from the art of hosting which is a very inspiring concept where we create a dialogue where people can bring their gifts and we develop the cultures of communicating and, and sharing in the circle opinions and based on nonviolent communication also to learn to express our needs and make that a kind of culture which we share among ourselves but also to bring to to other places where we were connecting with other groups so this has been a very authentic experience of moving the facilitation also also together so we could identify what has been probably um, the challenges and adapt directly solutions together at the end of the project we prepared an exhibition so the and the movie so the volunteers were invited to share their experience in a, in a public event also and we were having a social media web page presence and documenting what we were doing so one of the volunteers had specific the role to to take care about that collect the stories and to do a, a yeah, an ongoing documentation which we would share and uh, this experience helped us to understand how volunteering and uh, yeah like how to, how to combine the different worlds because of course we can see that this project didn't finish at four o'clock or six o'clock during the day so the people were like on that mission and we needed to create a balance between work life private life um, cultural life also we were situated in berlin many of the activities were traveling experiences so we were like moving with a tent towards a festival or to to join also something which was already prepared and going on so the volunteers needed to to, to see this holistic experience as something uh, safe and something supportive so it was important to create a balanced space of of intensity so after a more intense experience there was some more free space where they could like prepare for each other activities so elements like cooking together like social excursions elements to get to know the 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 scene of, of art and culture in Berlin were part of that or to some historical places and I feel it's like a little bit showing the the, the possibility of um, shaping the journey while we are uh, on it and it has been a very very impactful experience for, for me as a coordinator I felt that this responsibility for having six people with me uh, was teaching me 
to to let go of, of of the control of the learning path of that people that it's not so much about me deciding what are the valuable elements but it's about me holding the space that they can express fully themselves what they need and wish and that they can take care about that that they learn to to shape their experiences which would then then answer for for their questions and i felt very empowered also of being part of that to to see the world through the perspective of the volunteers and then become a volunteer let's say by myself like contributing my work for for making this activity successful so this was like the the first the first case if you have any questions directly is also up for you to ask and then the, the project continued with uh, creating a, a solidarity um, project inside berlin so we developed a um a uh, local group which was then continuing to do this so it's, it's a kind of inspiring to see how local aspects of youth work can directly be linked with international volunteering where the, where the link of solidarity becomes like a common ground so, so the project is still going on and yeah, it's very inspiring to see that it's more than just people which are coming and going but we create a certain path we create a, a solid container for for holding that space also for the next generation to come and others to join. So it's it's not finished as the usual project would do, probably just making the report and it's done. It's basically making a, a path which is unfolding continuously. Um, oh yeah, here is the web page if you'd like to, to read more about the project, saferspacepirates.org. Um, here we have the, the second project or the second case which I would like to introduce is the Mobile Circus for Peace and uh, it's also inspiring to see the link between the international aspect and the local context. So we had a project around around solidarity in youth work, a one and a half year um, strategic partnership with partners from Ukraine, Italy, Poland and Greece and Germany and the final event of that one and a half years project was a uh, Kind of conference festival which we were hosting here in our community space in berlin so a three-day multidisciplinary kind of open space uh, driven conference about different aspects of solidarity and it was about to happen in february and it invited we invited also the ukrainian participants to join the partner and then the war started one day before our event was uh, was about to launch so which of course changed the focus of the event but already allowed that the prepared activities could shine in the light of, of the war and basically reflect our our role in now holding the space for, for for community supporting the ukrainians which are in the in the need to finding a safe space so the three days were like a kind of a kind of conference about how we can mobilize and facilitate this support towards the Ukrainian community. So based on this, uh, we reflected what we can bring, what, what is our offering. So we, of course, opened the space here that we could have Ukrainians living with us. The partner which came to join the, to join the conference, uh, Yarek and Mary, they brought a lot of authenticity of the actual situation of the people and this empowered even much more to find concrete actions which would be like directly responding to to, to their needs and one of the response was to to think about the, the children and to see that the suffering of the of the young uh, generation through that experience is very strong and we would like to support this with what we are already doing which is a circus and um, our first thought, of course, was to use already existing structures which we had, our organization, our, our collective. But when we decided that it would be much more impactful if we make an open call. So we make the open call for the mobile circus team for Ukraine. This was the first name of the project. And people came and uh, just respond to their need of doing something, something more than just giving money or, or, or following with an empathic open heart the news. So we invited them to come to a meeting, and this was the initiation of that of that project. And we created the project team based on that open call, and keep going with calling um, people in to join. And uh, based on that ground, we thought about how we can find uh, 
the the support which we need to move with the project further and we did a gala for fundraising and also connecting more to the circus community in berlin and we let the ukrainian artists which were already here in berlin um, present their their art and we gave the context of the project and the idea was to to do in berlin and in the polish ukrainian border um, mobile circus offerings which would help the especially the children to deal with the trauma and uh, and the challenges the emotional load which they got from the experience of war um, practically it was that from the team which we established we called in um, smaller groups which were implementing activities in berlin and at the border so in Berlin, we did uh, several pop-up actions in places where Ukrainians have been coming. We did stuff in parks. We did things in the, on the playground. We were um, making workshops in, in, uh, in for the school children in the holidays. So this was like one area of the activities. And another area was to go to the Ukrainian border. And here's like a little bit this adventurous aspect uh, very present. So we were like calling in for a date, we connected the team, we loaded the vans and we went to the Ukrainian border starting like from, from zero to set up an infrastructure and to develop a, um, an offering which would fit to the needs of the people there. So we connected to um, a center, which was a, a humanitarian aid center where people were, when they crossed the border could stay for several nights to, to get the, contact to a place to go in Europe and there were like up to 700 800 people in an old Tesco shopping mall and next to it we developed the offer with the circus to do something for the kids and this place we hold for around four months and the whole thing developed in a very in a very um yeah, fluent and uh, surprising way. The, the elements were not planned before. We arrived there, we found the space, we set up the circus tent, we started to do small shows, uh, activities inside the center for the kids, workshops, but also holding an open space with, with the kids, but also the, the parents could come and, and uh, experience a little bit more the feeling of, of, of home, of uh, relief, of of playing together. Um, so the pedagogy and the facilitation of that activities uh, were very much focused on um, how we can make the activities in a nice way connected to the needs of the people and how we can reflect the impact of being in that setting through a group community process. So there's two things like the professional, what we can actually do there as humanitarian aid in that space related to how we can hold space for each other to feel comfortable, to feel um, supported enough to bring that. And uh, we were living also together next to the project in tents most of the time. So the living and the working space were very much related. And here, most of the people who joined were professionals which were already doing things in the context of circles. So here we worked with people which uh, could already be part of a professional team. And still we developed something very new and innovative. So this four months of experience, which had different waves, and where we had like in the beginning an initiation team from around eight people, then the groups changed. People came for two weeks, three weeks, and they were like keeping the, the place alive with the changing of, of the, of the co composition of the team. And uh, we supported this with some organizational uh, frame so that there were um, uh, um, financial gratification of everyone to come, but basically kind of volunteer payment. We had food and uh, materials and transport provided and kind of shared, um, shared a common responsibility about the project with everyone who would like to contribute. So people could like also on the organizational level joined how we, how we unfold the project. On the spot, we were holding space for, for, for moments of, of debriefing, uh, planning meetings. We develop a culture of how we can uh, communicate meaningful with each other, connected to the other projects and the other, um, and the other volunteers, professionals around. So it was a very international space because many international volunteers came from all around the world. Yeah, and we also 
offered our services to other centers which were in the area and also started to, to go inside Ukraine and doing activities with the, with the circus there. So these four months have been a, a really strong experience of, of shaping something in a, in a place where it's um, where the conditions of our work are, are very, very different from, from the world where we came from. So, so seeing this new reality of being working in the context of war and in a war zone and allowing that our service, our offerings, the circles can su support people's support people's uh, suffering was putting a totally different light on that. Um, a light of, of, of being in an, in an urgency, but still being with what we do love to do, what is our passion. So we were enjoying so much the playing with the children because this is something which is authentically within. We changed the context radically and we had a much more stronger emotional connection to the work probably which we would have in our everyday life and we saw the impact of that on all different levels so we saw the learning of the of the individuals a very strong experience of, of being faced with a lot of challenges but still feeling the community feeling the support of the team we had the learning on the ability to to make a change with our hands like in a such abstract situation like the the war which so much so much uh, yeah, a feeling of being 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 hopeless or being powerless. We created the space where the people could directly feel that with their hands they can make a change. And um, we impacted many individuals, but I feel also we impacted a lot um, the support offering which was around. So that the understanding that it's not just about giving food and clothes and a shelter, but also about giving a feeling of, of empathy, allowing uh, playfulness to come back, like light to shine again, that this is an important element. This has been identified and uh, supported. And I feel that this is something where we are still learning a lot and, and trying to, to see how we can continue bringing this, uh, this beauty into the darkness of, of our reality, which many people of us are around us are facing. Um, and the, the, the third project, the third case, which I would like shortly to show is the, is the sailing over the Atlantic, which is, which we put um, now for two years, this year was a second one. So it's 23 sail days of sailing from, um, from the Canary Islands to the, to the Caribbeans. And uh, we are on a catamaran, there are like nine people on it. And um, this year we recruited uh, six people to, to join us and create a community uh, of, of, yeah, of sailors, adventurers. Um, the criteria was to, to, to look for some artistic motivation to join the journey that we, we consider that it's not like a sailing adventure only, but it's like we're experiencing a change of the environment uh, through being out for 23 days of civilization, to be in the rhythm of the day and night, to have this wind as, as our power, which is car carrying us and hold this to transform through artistic dialogues, through a creative exchange into some personal, but also through some community learning. And um, we invited a filmmaker with us who was like documenting that and with interviews and like also his artistic view of co-creating the experience and um, allow that this be uh, on a daily basis reflected and shaped together as a community experience. So we did workshops, we did every day, uh, a plan, there were kind of day flow, there were shifts on deck, there were kind of all aspects of our living together has been like kind of part of the learning and, and being supported by a, by, a, by a process of facilitation. So we had different teams which were responsible for different aspects of the boat. These teams were also changing. We had a very practical dimension, which was basically to keep the sailing going and to have a safe environment for everyone. We have a emotional dimension where we got into this feeling okay what is happening with me through the circumstances which we are now on we have a um, kind of artistic 
process going on with tasks every day, with an open stage that we were presenting the art, with community moments of doing art together. Then we have a society political aspect related as one of the participants was from Ukraine. She was also like holding the, the flame for the topic, how to bring peace through our experience here into the context of the, of the war in the Ukraine. And what is our role as artists, how we can share, exchange our, our potentials as artists to contribute directly to the situation in the Ukraine or indirectly through being attentive and aware about that aspect. And uh, arriving uh, to the other side in the, in the Caribbean, we had one week about um, reflecting and integrating the experience and preparing an exhibition as the final element of our, of our journey, which was open for the, for the public and was like supported by local artists and allows us to um, present what has been the transformative impact of the journey on us personally, and what were the creative outcomes which we would like now to share and probably develop further um, an artistic level here. So the, this has been a strong experience about how a language needs to be adapted to the intensity of the learning experience. When we speak about feelings and when we speak about such a strong transformative experience, it's like being nearly one month away from the reality which we are used to then the language which we create can't be just the words so we need to much more holistically also address the moments of reflection the briefing so it inspires us a lot to see art as also a, um, a big uh, potential to explore when we create learning environments and uh, interesting to see what this dimension of of peace have made with the experience because we kind of labeled the journey under the under the flag of peace. We even had a physical flag of peace with us. So it allowed us with that focus to have the experience um, being, mm, being put in the context of peace. Peace, what does it mean for me on an individual level? What does it mean for us on a community level? What does it mean on us on a political level? What do we like to bring from our personal experience into the world? What is peace as a as a bridge? um the, the the path for us to to bring our art so this question has been really inspiring and it allows a little bit to see uh, how youth work art and uh, the work in the context of of the times which we are now in can have a have a potential to be explored further uh, and yeah this project is still going on we are about to present the results in february on the 25th here in berlin to bring the crew together and to show in an artistic sharing and an exhibition in a in a moment also to allow people to 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 connect to that vision to that idea and probably to co-create the next edition together so I feel very invited so just for now the the three case studies we are I try a little bit to to bring the conclusions uh, now as a focus so on the one hand of kind it's kind of visible that the passion to do that things need to come from within so i on a personal level experience through through that adventure through, through putting them together on a, on a journey um, focus which i have in my life i see that it allows me to grow continuously and the links between the experiences are very important to integrate what is the sailing meaning for my local work how I can um, hold space in this different settings in the in the same energy, in the same kind of openness to 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 hold um, yeah the responsibility to creating a safe container rather than to to push a kind of vision through. So and I feel a lot of humbleness that life is a, is a wonderful teacher, and I I like to support as an assistant what is coming from life and to allow that probably my assistants, but also everybody else's assistant have the same value to, to connect to what life is teaching us. So this is a little bit where, where I see my personal, personal growth here. Um, on the pedagogical level, I feel that journey, when we see it as, as a life journey, which we're all on, is a, is a focus which allows us to understand much more the role of learning in our lives. So when we see us being on that journey and we recognize that we are all in a kind of similar 
similar conditions invited to grow. And the conditions are like our physical conditions, our cultural conditions, but also probably the, the need of, of safety, the need of being accepted in a community. When the all aspects we see as, as shared, as common, then the pedagogy becomes something which is like a, it's a, a culture, it's a dialogue which we co-create and probably asking the right questions and holding space for being aware about being together on that journey can inspire us to grow also in a, in a shared pedagogy. This is a little bit what, what I stay for, that there is not one way, but there is a, it's a journey which is combining the ways. And I see a lot of potential in, in this embodied practice that we bring learning when we, when we support people from the head into the body, from the understanding level to the integrating and uh, feeling what is impacting the experience on me or within me. And for that, we need to develop tools and we need to address also the pedagogy much more wider then a dinner together can become a very important element of the whole learning process because it concludes something or like going out together in nature and allow people to connect to the wisdom of the nature and feeling themselves is probably much more important than to stay and doing a lecture what the people should now take from the experience and what is for me a key is to to see each other on an equal level that, that there is not one which have more to say than the other or there is not one which have something to, to 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 push but we are all here on the on a on a shared on a shared level of being being equal as learners and uh, this inspires me a lot to do the work which i do to address my learning needs and to be authentically transparent that i'm also on this learning path on the organizational level I feel that it makes a lot of sense to, to create resources which are allowing us to hold space in a safe way. Very important is to, to connect to, to professionals which are already on the path. So when we speak about sailing, for example, we connect to a professional sailing school. We are supported by, by a captain which knows how to sail and hold the space in a, in a professional way. So invites us to, to reach out for, for partnerships and to create to create bridges. To, to people which are already dealing with with the topic probably of adventure like um, activities um, around this this pedagogy of of um, being outside outdoors and to try to integrate that elements in 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 our work and but for me it's important never stop reaching for for some new horizons and to go beyond and of course, we are doing circles, but we understand that our circles focus can be adapted and connected to so many other uh, focuses of art and, and social work. So we are very open for the synergies and these bridges. And institutional perspective would be probably to see the value of that and to, to also stand behind that value, because it seems to be that the training course is much more uh, supported when it can say that after this five days the people will learn and learn these things and when we create a five-day experience with this kind of open probably an institution would have an uncertainty if this would be like valuable so of course we can write aims and put our stuff in the in the context of a language that institution would like to hear but probably it would be also nice that institutions are making an an effort to understand what is behind this learning concept which we will much more holistically address to the development of the competences of the people. And young people here with a focus, but also I would say that everybody can identify himself with a life journey and probably the institutional support could also go into a much more holistic and lifelong learning, which probably still needs to be established. And in the long term, probably it would be nice to let a little bit go of this kind of structures, which are putting learning and predefined areas and allow that learning can be much more a garden where different initiatives can pop up and peer learning will become the same valuable as, as the learning through institutions and teachers and that organize learning communities and people which gather around topics can also be valuable institutions which are giving certified certified competences which can later be applied so there is a lot of questions but I guess there's a lot of horizons to be open. And I feel that Salto as an institution is showing a little bit also what are the possibilities. 
and how to invite people for a more co-creation and open understanding of responsibility towards educational activities and how we can create them together. So um, I had a little bit about the follow-up, what we are planning to do. Um, the idea was just to show that these journeys are still going on. So in Berlin, we are still working with the concept of circus in open space. We are holding the space for connecting to other players which are making social work or cultural work and bring circus as an additional element, but also through the boats, through the activities in the public space in the parks. We also hold space that playfulness can become a healing and inspiration, something which allows community building. We are very much still motivated to support the Ukraine and to see how we can bring the circus in the context of humanitarian aid and how to feel that there is more to to open up and to see, especially in this in this uh, topic of how to reestablish peace, how to make when after the war, hopefully very soon, we will have a we will have a society which needs that that focus on how to re rebuild uh, the social bounds, how to create identity, how to develop the infrastructure again. And here I feel a lot of potential for youth work and that approach, this learning of how to become active in the local community, to contribute to that change, how to empower young people also from abroad to come and to contribute towards this rebuilding and creating partnerships. And here I feel a lot of calling and, and supporting also still the suffering in that moment where the war is going on. On the level of Europe, we are part of some networks and we try to bring that perspective in the networks. Also, thanks to Tomek, there is this facilitators, trainers, uh, community which is sharing around around that topic. So I feel that there is a lot of networking and, and probably also a little bit lobbying and uh, sharing knowledge and uh, being present in the discussion when we look about future of learning that is, there are potentials also for this concept to be to be taken as serious. And then with the Salic adventure, we are preparing the next the next uh, edition and reflect about the potentials how to develop that further. So thank you very much. So it was like the kind of input. And now the idea could also be if you are still feel motivated to get into the questions and to look a little bit probably where we could look on some of the conclusions again and to if you like to to look on some of the experiences but i would like you to guide a little bit what you need now to conclude and still would like to hear thank you okay, maybe i can be first um yeah thank you thank you for the basically information everything what happened here I'm very much interested in the um, circus area of, of working. I mean, uh, this was very interesting. And I'm also trying to do some some uh, circus stuff here. Um, and it's yeah, it's very inspir uh, how do you say that? inspirational, inspirational. Yeah, I think it gives me inspiration, basically. Um, yeah, it was very interesting and uh, good to know that these projects are running and they are working and they uh, achieve their aims, basically. So, mm, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else would like to ask something or to comment or to bring some perspective? Um, can I say something? Yes. Uh, I want to say thank you for this very interesting and inspiring lecture and for supporting Ukraine. Uh, this is uh, very important uh, because I'm from Ukraine and um, uh, from East North East area. And um, now I'm as a refugee, and I know what is all about this suffering. And I want to also want to mention that uh, hardships and adversity uh, also teaches us a lot and forces us to learn a lot of new things. 
to adapt to new reality. And this is a sad experience, but from sad experience, we learn a lot also. And when we learn, we become, become more wise and uh, we can help others also to learn. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tomek, do you want to ask something uh, to put the focus on the institutional perspective? I'm always astonished by the energy you put in the work and also commitment. And it's definitely energy in what drives you to be all around these topics. That's great. And I always like to work with people that are really committed to what they do. And I also want to drive myself with the commitment and not with another reasons so sometimes it means that we work in late hours sometimes it means that we need to go for unusual solutions in institutions is difficult of course our programs erasmus and european solidarity Corps, are not uh, super flexible but from the other hand it is possible to realize really all the uh, ideas that we have and uh, go a bit out of a uh, beaten tracks of uh, youth, youth work and non-formal education. So let's use it and uh, let's continue and uh, let's have more projects and more inspirations in this area of uh, adventure education, which is just an approach in a way, because what matters in the end is the people that we work with and all this sharing and exchanges that we have and that we uh, uh, empower each other. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I also feel very inspired to share it with you. And uh, I feel much more now that this is a calling to join a journey. So however, or wherever you would like to get connected or you have some ideas or probably to, to connect with what your life and your work is about. So feel very welcome to stay in contact. There are some of the a uh, project where you can a little bit go deeper. If you have further questions, I'm also totally up for uh, answering. So feel free to uh, to contact. And yeah, to Tomek, I have a great thank you once again for the invitation and not just for making this presentation here, but for all the years being trusting and supporting that we can do something valuable in the field of learning together. And yeah, now I feel that this journey is becoming much more something which we can also share and open up and create partnerships, reach out for, for people which are connected to that vision of learning. And I also agree with Tomek that this dialogue is an open dialogue and all institutions, all perspectives, how learning can, can come into, into lives are very, very much uh, welcome to join. And um, yeah, it motivates me to, to keep going. And also that presentation helps me a little bit to understand better what is, the, what is the common sense of the activities which I do and how I can improve the quality and how I can work further on creating meaningful experience for others, for myself, around and uh, within the community where I live here. So thank you very much for making this, uh, opening this door and then Looking forward how the journey will continue. Aho, thank you. <laughs>